Hey guys, in this video I'll go over the latest update to my advanced stylized material. One of the most requested feature is finally here, a default light shading model that supports dynamic lighting and shadows. I walk you through what's different in this version, how it affects the look of your materials, and why would you choose this instead of the unlit version. And on top of that, I've improved the blueprint utility tools making it easier to swap or convert materials. However, if you are new to this, the advanced stylized material is my take on a non-post-process stylized shader for Unreal Engine. It's a fully procedural and customizable system that I am actively developing for my future projects. So to get most of this update, check out my previous videos on how to use the material. So first of all, what's the difference between the default lit and unlit versions? Well, they use different shading models. Unlit materials ignore all scene lighting, things like point lights, spotlights or directional light have no effect. They also don't react to shadows or reflections. Instead, all lighting is handled inside the shader using emissive values. So that kinda makes unlit materials great for stylized or those flat shaded looks. Default Lead, on the other hand, uses Unreal's dynamic lighting system and fully supports PBR. This means it can use normal maps, roughness, metallic properties, and most importantly, it reacts to lights, shadows, or reflections. So because of this, Default Lead is a better choice when you need more realistic shading or stronger interaction with scene lighting. And here's a direct comparison between the two versions of the shader, which you can check out in the showcase level. And since I'm building a stylized material framework, I had to cheat Unreal's PBR system to achieve the look and creative control I wanted. I applied the same logic for procedural effects as in the Unlit version, but this time using albedo, roughness and metallic channels to match the results as closely as I can possibly could. Now, if you switch to buffer visualization mode and check uh, the base color or roughness, you'll notice the difference. The unlit version appears black. Now, the apples on the left have a more pronounced gradient due to their interaction with the direction light in the scene. There's also this uh, specular highlight, which isn't present on the unlit version on the right. Now, if I add another light source, like a point light, and move it around, you will see a subtle interaction, like the color shifts in response to the lighting. Another key difference is how they react to shadows. If I move this plane up, notice how the apples on the right, which is unlit version, remain unaffected, while those on the left properly dark darken as they fall under the shadow. Alright, let's check out the material parameters and see how you can control the default lead shader. Here, I'm using a skeletal mesh with some basic animation. A lot of people have asked if the material works on characters. I know, there is this common issue where procedural textures start floating when a character moves, but as you can see, it just works fine. I actually posted a quick test of a stylized dragon on my socials using this awesome model by Protofactor. But anyway, back to the shader. The default lit version has pretty much the same exposed parameters as the unlit one, so you should be already familiar with those. And some extra things I added is the reflection parameters, which kinda mixes roughness and metallic values to fake, you know, reflective surfaces. Of course, this isn't proper PBR, and we're totally breaking rules here, but it gives you a nice way uh, to tweak reflections and get the look you want. Now, if I move both versions into this shadow corner, you'll notice that this procedure effects like rim lights or fake reflections still show up. You can adjust those with the intensity parameter and control how strong they are or dial down the emission completely. And if you want even better blending with the scene, try enable Distance Fields AO. It basically adds an extra self-shadowing effect which helps ground the material a bit more. I've actually got a separate video on how to use it, so 
go ahead and check that out if you're interested. And one last thing I want to show you is the normal map. As I mentioned earlier, the default shading model supports normal maps. This is super useful if you've got, of course, high poly version of the mesh and you bake down all those details into a normal map. So why not use it for a stylized shader too, right? And by the way, let me quickly show you how you can convert any Unlead material you may already have to the default lead version. Just open up the ASF tools and there's this convert to default lead button. This will automatically create a material instance with the same material parameters and apply it to the selected mesh. You can even check the apply to original mesh option and it will switch the material on the original mesh as well. It's super handy, especially if you're working with multiple material IDs. Anyway, let's back to normal maps. So if you want to use bake normal map, make sure you check the use object UV checkbox. Otherwise the texture will default to triplanar projection, which we definitely don't want in this case. And as before, the normal map affects things like rim light and other procedural effects. But there's also this effect shading checkbox. If I enable it, you will notice it adds extra details to the surface, just like you would expect from a normal map. So now we've got a bit of a blend between the PBR and a sterilized shader, which might be exactly what you're looking for, right? Okay guys, that's a wrap on the update I want to show you. Thanks so much for the all awesome suggestions and I really hope you like this version of the material. See you next time.